This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. The ancient Roman poet Publius Ovidius once wrote that the road to valor is constructed by adversity. The philosopher Seneca said, gold is tried by fire and brave men by adversity. And every day the world turns over on someone who has just been sitting on top of it. The winds of life will bend you. But if you have resiliency of the spirit, they cannot break you. Courageously to straighten again after your head has been bowed by defeat, disappointment, and suffering is a supreme test of human character. After his contract expired with MGM Motion Pictures, Ernest Matre, the European film director, went to work for a small independent studio. Some months later, MGM officials saw one of the films produced for this new company, and they said, it's wonderful. Someone asked, how is it that for us, you never did turn out films as good as these? I'm sorry, Matre explained, but you never gave me a small enough budget. Hammering hardens steel, but crumbles putty. May your faith withstand all the hammering it must ever endure. Said Jesus, simply have faith in God. When life seems hopeless, remember the botanist Luther Burbank once said that he considered his greatest contribution to the world to be the advancement and proof of the great principle that a plant born a weed does not necessarily need to remain a weed, or that a plant degenerated by the conditions of nature does not have to remain degenerate. Does that not apply to human beings as well? Someone once asked him. Yes, he replied, heretofore in the plant world, when we found a dwarfed plant or a weed or a fruit that seemed to have degenerated until it was worthless, we have assumed that God meant it to remain so, or it would never have reached that deplorable condition. And so we allowed it to remain a useless thing, a parasite on plant life, an obnoxious, ill-smelling outcast. But said Luther Burbank, I have enunciated and proved the principle that there is no plant so great an outcast that it cannot, with skill and with care, thus be reclaimed. And so it is with human life. So with your human life, whatever its problems and pains, whatever its conditions. J.C. Penney, the famed merchant and philanthropist, offered these six principles for practical application to business life and to everyday daily life. Number one, preparation. A person must know everything possible about his business, must know more than any other person knows. His achievement depends largely on preparation. Number two, hard work. The only kind of luck any person is justified in counting on is hard work. This means sacrifice, persistent effort, and dogged determination. Growth is never by chance. It is the result of a combination of forces. Number three, honesty. There is a kind of honesty that keeps a person from taking something which belongs to someone else. But there is also that finer honesty that will not allow a person to give less than his or her best that makes him count not his hours, but his duties and his opportunities, that constantly urges him to enlarge his information, to increase his efficiency. Number four, having confidence in people. J.C. Penney said, I have found my most valuable associates by giving people responsibility, by making them feel that I relied on them. And those who have proved unworthy have only caused the others who far outnumbered them to stand in a clearer light. Number five, appealing to the spirit in people. One of the wisest of teachers said, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Every enterprise in which I have been interested demonstrates this fundamental fact. And finally, number six, said J.C. Penney, I believe in a practical application of the golden rule, as taught by the master nearly 2,000 years ago. One of the most fundamental laws that can be expressed in words, specifically stated in the literature of 11 of the known religions of the world. What you are is God's gift to you. What you make of what you are is your gift to God. And a living faith in the living God in this hour of your life can literally make all the difference in the world. It can even be a matter of life and death. I recall reading once psychologist Harry Warren, director of the New York City Suicide Prevention Center, saying, I've been manning these phones for a long time, and I think that I've heard just about everything by now, but we don't really care what's wrong with the caller, drunk, crackpot, whatever. If they've got a real problem, and if they're serious, we're happy to lend any aid that we can. From his 45 years on the suicide hotline telephone. Warren suggests 
that there is one common thread connecting most potential suicides, and that is simply loneliness. In some way or another, even if the callers have many friends, they are lonely, they feel lonely. And loneliness means depression, and that can lead to anything, says psychologist Warren. But the deepest loneliness in human life is a loneliness for God. And by faith that God is your father, that you are a son or daughter of God, infinitely beloved and valuable, your life this moment can be totally transformed. The kingdom of God is within you. You read that at the close of Jesus' life, quote, they arrived at a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit down here with me while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John. My heart is in a bitter anguish, he told them. Stay here and keep watch for me. And then he walked forward just a little way and flung himself down on the ground, praying that if it were possible, he might not have to face the ordeal which lay before him. Good Father, he said in his prayer, all things are possible to you. Please, let me not have to drink this cup. And yet, it is not what I want, but what you want that I desire. And that is the greatest prayer which mortal man or woman can ever pray, to know and do the will of God, even in the darkest of life's darkest hours. May that be your prayer as well. In this moment, God, your will be done. Harry Emerson Fosdick once wrote, A disordered generation such as ours shakes the confidence of many in religion's basic truths. This confused world can easily be seen as a purposeless welter, with everything pointless and transitory, as in the old story of Sinbad the sailor, anchoring his boat on what seemed an island, but finding it to be instead a great beast of the sea that went charging off with him, boat and all, across the tossing ocean. So our trusted stabilities fail, and disturbed societies and nations drag us with them in turmoil. Just such chaotic times as these, however, can light up religious faith's profoundest meaning. Its assertion that this fugitive earthly scene is permeated with the eternal, that transiency is not the last word in this universe, that life's changefulness is underlain and penetrated by an unchanging purpose, that behind and within all vicissitude from everlasting to everlasting, there is God. International relations, economic conditions, moral customs are inconstant and confused. And such instability unsettles us that Jeremy Taylor's picture of a man clapping his shoulder to the ground to try to stop an earthquake is understandable by anyone who has labored hard to study and improve the world. Ideas, habits, institutions, ethical standards, once apparently solid and durable, now seem to many frail as frost landscapes on a window pane. The hydrogen bomb makes everything on Earth seem perishable, and modern astronomy confirms the ancient psalmist's condescension to the stars, yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. And so this is the pessimist's view, that life on a transient planet, in an exploding universe, with all existence the ephemeral result of colliding physical particles, is ultimately meaningless. It comes from nowhere and is going nowhither. Its only continuity is the repetition of endless variation. Its only changeless element is change. There is no design behind it, no purpose in it, no outcome ahead of it, and Macbeth's description is accurate, full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Only when amid this jumble of vicissitude and mutability, something constant and abiding is seen, only when the eternal emerges amid the transient, is there any ultimate sense in human life? And for the lack of that, increasing numbers of people are confused and desperate. As one young college student said, what is there to tie to? History could be written in terms of the varied intellectual and spiritual problems which from age to age have pressed up into the crucial focus of attention. And in our time, tottering with worldwide convulsions, this problem which we are considering is incredible. To find the permanent amid the impermanent, the durable amid the fugitive is now a matter of life and death, wrote Theodore Dreiser. I find life to be not only a complete illusion or mirage, which changes and so escapes or eludes one at every point, but the most amazing fanfare of purely temporary and always changing and ever vanishing and in the main clownish and ever ridiculous interests that it has ever been my lot to observe. End of quote. 
Indeed, a chaotic era such as this presents not only the need of discerning the abiding amid the transitory, but as well the opportunity of discerning it. The highest use of a shaken time is to discover the unshakable. When everything that can totter is staggering, then is the time to put our thoughts on what stands firm. As Jesus put it in his parable, two houses, one built on sand and the other on rock, look alike in tranquil weather. Who can discern the difference between them then? But when the rains descend, the floods come, and the winds blow and beat upon them, then one sees which one is solid and which is insecure. In a troubled era, writes Fosdick, this is the secret of the soul's triumph, using the shaken time to reveal all the more clearly the unshakable, the living reality of the living God, who by living faith you can know for time and for eternity. When life is most difficult, Remember well these words of a famous composer. When praised for the ease and the grace of his melodies, he exclaimed, Ah, you too little know with what difficulty this ease has been acquired. The battle of life, in most cases, is fought uphill, declared Edmund Burke, and to win it without a struggle were perhaps to win it without honor. If there were no difficulties, there would be no success. If there were nothing to struggle for, there would be nothing to be achieved. Difficulties may intimidate the weak, but they act only as a wholesome stimulus to men and women of resolution and valor. All experience of life, indeed, serves to prove that the impediments thrown in the way of human advancement may, for the most part, be overcome by steady good conduct, honest zeal, activity, perseverance, and above all, by a determined resolution to surmount all difficulties and to stand up courageously against misfortune. The pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. Have faith in God. Give your life in wholehearted dedication to doing the living will of the living God and live fearless of life and fearless of death as the beloved son or daughter of God you are. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, Work. Let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644 USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.